Welcome back to another episode of the Trust Issues Podcast. Today, we're doing a little Q&A. We've had questions from Instagram and we want to answer them with you live. So let's get into it. All right. So today's questions are really juicy. They're really good. We're excited. And we're going to give you a little shout if you asked us on social media. The first question comes from at Ivy Moon. Why is your podcast called Trust Issues? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great question because actually a lot of people thought it was like, did your spouse cheat? Yes, like what's yeah. happening? Um, so no, the answer is no. <laughs> but this is a great question because we want you guys to all know and really like believe in the name and the brand of Trust Issues and why we're so passionate about it. So yeah. let's talk about it. Well, I think honestly, even the concern of when we were going to start this podcast it was like we just had a ton of conversations and it usually was revolved around how society wants you to do things a certain way and if you go against the grain it's sometimes you viewed as bad and me and you have always naturally been just against the grain of like what you're supposed to do how you're supposed to do it so I remember there was one night we were talking I was like I don't know I just have trust issues with this stuff and it was like it was a click. Trust it issues. was like a I, it was a light bulb moment. Yes. Yeah. So that's like the initial conception of trust issues. Yeah. So. so the idea is is that we have trust issues with how society tells us to live, yes. work, and be. And we think there's a better way. So this show is all about uncovering what that is, peeling back the layers, having those conversations. Yes. Um, whether it's having conversations about money, having conversations about relationships, about health, and certainly business as well. We want to have those conversations because if you're someone who maybe you went to school, you went to college, you got your degree, you're listening to the show and you're working a job that maybe, you know, you had a degree for, you submitted your resume, yeah. but it's not lighting you up or you don't just feel like obsessed with your life. I don't know. There's there's a better way. That's how we believe. And that's how we see it. So we want to bring you into the conversation for that. At F Nicole 13. Shout out to my girl Francine. She said, do you have financial tips for 1099 workers? And what are some of the things you've learned the hard way when you are self-employed? Uh, I think you need to answer this I was question. Say, <laughs> I can start. Kyle with is this. our CFO here. So yes. this is well, a good question for you. For, for many years, it was everything was just personal. It was like, why do I need all these other bank accounts? It doesn't matter. We're hardly making any money anyway. So let's just do it this way. As we started to grow and scale, yes, it is very important to have, you know, either an LLC or an S corp or, or your business set up so you can have these things differentiated for, you know, tax reasons and all of those things. One of the things I did, especially with being, we're primarily 1099 is I looked at other industries who are 1099. And one of the big industries that are in that field are realtors. Yeah, really. So they're 1099. So we had realtor friends and even our realtor who helped us get our first property. I reached out to her and I was like, listen, you know, I've been doing things this way, but I really just want to find an accountant who like gets it as a 1099, obviously not trying to do anything illegal or shady, but like, hey, how do we do? How do we are smart with our taxes? Yes. How do like, we do this the right yeah. way for who we are? And literally she, she pointed me to an accountant who literally specializes in 1099. So like, and believe me, we have been down the road with so many accountants trying to figure this out. So that was the way we went. It was like, I just started asking around. It was like, Hey, I want to make sure I'm doing this the right way. I want to make sure we're smart. So one thing led to another and we found an accountant who specializes in 1099 and that has kind of changed everything because everything else after that, he's been able to kind of point us in a different direction and help us out. Yeah. It's like he understands our industry and so he understands our income. Yes. Where it's like, we're not just a W-2, you know, we have a specific tax bracket and way there are tax identification. So it's a whole different ball game. I think one thing you also were going to say was setting up different bank accounts, you know, and different investment accounts. And we have those things now. We didn't have them in the beginning because like you said, you were like, well, we didn't have much money anyways. For sure. But I think, you know, as soon as you can, starting to set up different bank accounts, looking into investment accounts, yeah. how you can have your money growing for you. Those are things that we really should have done earlier on. We learned the hard way. That's okay. That's, but it's really wise to do that. That's what I was going to say. So at, just like just like I did, ask, ask questions, you know, look around, get someone who can get you set up on the right path with 1099 because like all of us you want to grow you want to scale and if you start doing that without the proper systems it can really bite you in the butt what's so. harder in the long run to kind of go backwards yes. and set up the systems later and that's to like, be honest that's kind of what we did yeah it we was did. like we were just going so hard in one way and it was like oh boy we yeah. got to make sure we're just like even now with our financial planner. Yes. Like he has things set up for us where, you know, our money can be growing for us. And it's like, doesn't matter what the economy is doing. Like we're investing wisely. Like these are things that, you know, they don't teach you this stuff in school. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> this is why we have trust issues with yeah. the school system. But, yeah. you know, you 
have to really advocate for yourself and you have to do your due diligence to find people. And I know this is really hard. Honestly, we've had a hard time. There was a time where we actually hired a accounting agency and they were (sighs) really horrible. They were terrible. They were super late on filing our taxes. So you really have to do due diligence. I think referrals is the best way to go about it. So finding someone else who has worked with that person. That's exactly what we did. I think that's the best way. Because we were recommended to a couple of different people, but I'm like, no, I want to work with someone who like that. I personally know is also working with like our person. realtors working with yes our our accountant yes yeah so good it's such a juicy question it really is we'll have to get more into financial planning and in we another absolutely episode want to yes because it's a good one yeah the next question is by Sigut Zidikite she said how do you balance big city energy versus your small town vibes while still being ambitious this is such a good question and really juicy and it honestly makes me think a lot because we are like I know I can speak for myself I'm a super ambitious person I have a lot of goals I have a lot of dreams we really are especially launching the show yeah. you know we're a little bit in this like hustle season of getting the show up off the ground kicked off hiring the right team for it yeah. um, we have a lot of goals and dreams right now that we're working towards in our life life and this year 2023 is very much a building year for us and I think that it's really easy to get caught up in that but I think at the end of the day it's the why behind it so I don't know what you think on this and I can't wait to hear what your thoughts but for me I'm like the reason I have big goals and big dreams and the reason that I like care about pursuing my ambitions is number one for income and number two for impact. And at the end of the day, those two things are my driving force. But I really, at the end of the day, love a simple life. It's like simplicity is the new flex. Yeah. You know, simplicity is really like at the end of the day, what I think a lot of people are craving. I think a lot of people want to be close to their family. They want to be in nature. They want to have options. And it's like choices are the ultimate luxury. Yeah. Simplicity is like the ultimate luxury, like being able to make your choices. I think about so many people who like have to commute into the city because that's where their job is. Yeah. And we actually live pretty close to the city. It's funny whenever we like get out during rush hour, we're like, oh my God, like people have to do this every day. It's so stressful. We literally went to an appointment yesterday. We're like, this is so cortisol inducing. Like I feel my cortisol rising as we're out on this road. My everyday life, just sitting in traffic, sitting in traffic. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't even like my central nervous system cannot. But I think that's like where we have these goals and ambitions because we want other people to experience the freedom that we have today. Yeah. And also we want our child and our family to have those things. And it's like simplicity, I feel like is truly the flex of like being able to just choose to do whatever you want to do to be able to like let's go to the park today let's have a picnic in the park today that's like ultimately the dream for us you know it requires in this economy it requires financial flexibility in order to have that you know and i think i'm kind of going to come at this question from like a broader point where like if we would have like when we originally started everything if we would have stayed in our hometown and there's nothing wrong with hometowns but if we would have stayed where we were we would have never been able to grow and take the risks and and do those things we would have been able to do so like for us we've been on that journey of like hey we're going to risk everything to like move to the big city where there's new people new opportunities so like we've gone down that road of like florida then charlotte now obviously here in nashville and it's like we've made connections grew our network and we've gotten to a point now where it's like okay, this is basically exactly where we want to be, but now we want to almost scale over to that simple lifestyle. So like we did the nitty gritty work of like, oh my God, you got to like grind it out. And you know, we moved around so many times. We did what we needed to do. Networked a lot. And we got to where we wanted to be. I mean, obviously there's way more to go we want to accomplish, but like now we're like, okay, started our family. Now we want to get back to kind of like how we grew up those yeah. roots, but we're also in a position that's, you know, better than we were. Yeah. I think it's like, if you're asking how to balance it, I think it's different for every person. A hundred percent. Because I think it comes down to your values and I think it comes down to what do you want your life to look like? Yes. You know, on a tangible scale. I yeah. think for us, we want to wake up in the morning, put our feet in the grass, have like the birds chirping. We want to like see our creek in the back. Yeah. We want to be able to breathe the fresh air. We live close to the city now. We have a highway behind our house like we could be downtown Nashville in five Five, ten minutes and we're over it you know but that's the season we're in so everyone is in a different season and I think that balance is a really hard thing to achieve I think it's less about balance and I think it's more about seasons yeah and it's like what season are you in because we've done the big city networking yeah plugging in all that and I think that was for a time and now like 
where we're at now in our life is like, we just want simplicity. Yeah. We work hard so that we can literally like be on our property and yeah. put our feet in the grass. Like that's what we really want. And that's what, I mean, even saying that it's like what works for us might not work for you. So you need to figure out like what your, what your risks are going to be, what you want to, you know, put out there because you know that'll get you to the next step so that that's kind of the plan you need to figure out for for yourself in that aspect because one person's journey is not going to you know be the same as the next person's yeah, so you know it's so good yeah okay next question is from at emma dot tomacheva she said how long did it take to convert to your healthy lifestyle and what inspired the change Should I mean I can start off with that so <laughs> I feel like we've always had a healthy lifestyle and like we've had a standard for ourselves but I think the the journey we've been on, we've had serious seasons of neglecting our health, even though we know we should have been able to focus on it. But like, you know, we've been down that road of like all these other things have to be put first and our health does fade into the background a little bit. But then realizing like it is just a season and getting back. And I think we've been able to, to balance more now that we've kind of ridden that wave a couple times now of like unhealthy, unhealthy, you know, and it's like I think we're able to now implement healthier styles better well I think it's like it's the difference of like living all or nothing so, so you know we don't live an all or nothing lifestyle it's impossible to yeah if you're working for yourself you're also parents you also want to be healthy you also want to have some type of a social life you also want to be with your family like that's a lot of stuff to juggle plus you yes. might have a hobby on the back burner like I don't know you know there is things there's constantly things that are trying to buy for your attention so you know how long did it take I mean, we're still in it. We're yeah. still building a healthy lifestyle. We're still learning. Yes. Every single day is part of the process. Every single day we're learning something new. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a baby a year ago and I'm very much in a season right now where I'm trying to still heal my body. My hormones were really all over the place. It's been a really hard thing. So we can talk more about our healthy lifestyle in another episode, but I would just encourage you to allow yourself to be like, not be all or nothing. You know, it can be both and it can be learning how to be healthy while also and I know it's a juggling act. I know that's hard. It's it's something that we're constantly still learning. We'll talk about that more in another episode. But I think what inspired the change for us or whatever it like inspires a new change is just constantly wanting to feel our best. Yeah. We constantly want to bring our best to the table, to each other, to our family, to our work. And so that's like a non-negotiable. That's how we live. That's a yeah. non-negotiable for our life. So when you have that non-negotiable, it's much easier to follow through. Next question is by at miss underscore Jessica dot borrows. And she said, what are your best tips for overcoming imposter syndrome? Well, here's the deal. Every single person in society on earth who has a beating heart has experienced imposter syndrome. When we first started the show, I literally will never forget the first day we started, we were going to record. Yeah. I felt so much imposter syndrome. I was like, what are we talking about? What are we doing? Are we even going to be good at this? Yeah, yeah. This is going to be crazy. Like we had so much imposter syndrome that came up for us, but we did it anyways. And I think that's really the thing. I think number one is addressing it. I think I remember telling our producers, I was like, I feel like, what are we doing? Like, I remember just being like, this is like, I feel so out of my element, but we did it anyways. So talk about it acknowledge it it's a thing every person deals with it it doesn't matter who you are you're never immune to it and you'll you'll probably always deal with it at certain points always in your life. yes well if you're ever like trying to go for a new thing in your life you're like well I, how am i gonna do that like i've never done this before like we've never done a podcast before i know what are we doing who <laughs> says that we can do this like you know we still there's days like when we're gonna record we're like oh my gosh what are we doing yeah. What are we doing? But we do it anyway. So I think that's the answer. It's like, you're never going to not feel that. It's like, feel the fear and do it anyways. Like, just do it. Just rip the Band-Aid, run for your goals. Like, it doesn't matter what the imposter syndrome says. It's usually lying. And so. something I always have to tell myself with anything I'm trying to do that's out of my comfort zone is I'm very critical of myself with, with everything. And I tend to think other people criticize me the same way I do. That's where that imposter syndrome comes from. But in reality, I've, you know, I've heard this quote a bunch of times, but it's like the way you're perceiving yourself in your head of like the outcome of how you're going to be judged or looked at or whatever. No one's really paying attention to like no. that. Not like you. You know what I mean? Like Not like you are. The, the, people are watching, of course, but it's not like, you know, they're they're stopping everything they're doing to like judge you with what you're doing. It's kind of like, oh, they're doing that. Okay. Like, and you know, if you just kind of have that mindset of like, no one's focusing on you as much as you think they are. So just move we on. We all have no idea what we're doing. No. <laughs> so it's Even, fine. We're all just figuring it I out. Always, I always think of that 
when I was at Mexico, the trip we were going to, the lady we met, met in the airport. Oh my gosh, she was amazing. Such a sweet woman. We need to reach out to she her. She would again. actually be awesome to have. Anyway, she she's in her <laughs> mid sixties, and like we were in line at TSA or what? I don't even remember. But we were in line at immigration. Immigration, yes. Met this woman. Yeah. She we just clicked with her. We, we like. We, she was like the most beautiful woman, Dana. If you're listening. Yeah. We love you. We need to hang out with you. But she was, our conversation with her was so enlightening. Right. Because well, you, you introduce yourself and then it's always like, what do you do? That's the natural question. What do you do? What do you do? And it was like, we just kind of shared what we did. And then she's like, oh, well, she's like, well, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And she was someone who's like very successful, made a lot of money, but she- Super successful she, in she her 40s, and 50s. She, yeah, she shifted and she was doing something completely new. And she's like, oh, I'm just trying to, f-. no, she was almost 60. I don't know, but she looked 45. Like, she, she was, yes. Dana, you're beautiful. Yes. But anyway, she, she's like, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. I love hearing that, that she just shared that with us. It's yeah. like, you know. It's like we are all trying to figure it out. Yes. So give yourself grace. Well, I think, I mean, I loved all those questions. I mean, this was like so really good. fun to sit down and just kind of knock these ones out. I mean, even the ones with the, the 1099 and stuff like that, stuff you forget about. So these questions have been like extremely helpful to, you know. It even gives us a minute to reflect on yes. our journey. Yes. Yes. And just have these conversations with each other. So this was so good. We yes. can't wait to do more. And yeah, these are really juicy. Thanks so much for listening to the Trust Issues podcast. If you have more questions for us that you want us to answer on a future episode, come over to Instagram at Trust Issues Podcast and let us know. We'll see you next time.